Trying to get on the same level as a feline can be quite difficult, especially for new and novice cat owners. Food, water, shelter, clean litter box. Those essentials are vital, but if your goal is to build a fun and loving relationship with your cat, the ability to understand your pet and everything about them is paramount. In this material, I'll detail a few of the most notable things you should know about a cat. I'll also talk about the important role that each aspect can play in not only helping you to become a better owner, but developing that strong bond of trust. Cats are more willing to trust if they sense that you have a strong understanding of them. They'll relate to you if you're able to relate to them. Understanding your pet can often be the difference between being a proud pet owner compared to someone who simply takes care of an animal. Interesting topic and hopefully a helpful one. I've got you covered. Stay tuned. Let's start with understanding your cat's view of the world, their need for adventure, their need to live the independent life and allow that curious flag to fly. Space. It's important to give your cat personal space. Now, while this certainly doesn't mean that you should let them do anything and go anywhere, you have to be respectful of their own boundaries. Cats need to be able to live out their instincts. And whether we're talking about in the home or in your backyard, understand that cats need to be independent. Feel like they're able to make their own moves without being coaxed, without being blocked. It's really a mix of push and pull. The more that you allow your cat to be independent in a responsible way, of course, the more your cat will open up and become more social and more engaging with you. For some cats, they're really not able to form strong bonds with people until the people grant them a sense of freedom. This is why it's so very important to establish a cat-friendly environment in the home. That home within the home, your cat needs to feel secure but they also need to come and go as they please within the rules and the structure of the environment that you have established. And speaking of the environment, another thing to know and understand about cats is that they are quite territorial. They'll claim just about anything if given the chance. Marking territory is the name of the game. They'll do this with the face, the paws, the claws, through means of scratching. So just know this in advance. You bring your cat into your home for the very first time and they start to rub against everything in the house. This is not a time for discipline, but rather a time for understanding. Your cat is doing this long term as a way to feel comfortable. The more a cat claims, the safer they'll feel. The more familiar they'll become with the environment and given the chance, it won't be long before they'll claim you, rubbing against your legs and your face. Many cat owners, novice cat owners to be sure, can often have a difficult time getting on the same page as their pet. Everything is lost in translation. Owner doesn't understand the cat, and the cat is as equally confused by the owner. One of the biggest ways that you can have a breakthrough is to start taking cues, both positive and negative cues. The purrs, the tone, the pitch, your cat's body language. It can be a bit of a trial by fire at first, but it shouldn't take long before you're able to communicate with your cat and understand what they're attempting to tell you by the way that they sound and the way they move. Ear position, how that tail is positioned, the way your cat looks and moves, the way they sound. Nothing is accidental, it's all done with purpose and intent. As an FYI, I've done several videos on this channel about feline behavior and communication. Please check them out if you do feel so inclined. What does that purr really mean, that tail position? Is it important? Understanding the various forms of communication can really open up a brand new world when it comes to how your pet relates to you and how you relate to them. Next, let's talk about grooming. In the early going of ownership, you will probably think to yourself, wow, all this cat does is lick and clean and clean and clean and clean. And you nailed it. You're right. That's really about all a cat does. Not really, of course, but it's close. It's very close. If a cat isn't sleeping, eating, playing, or getting those nice cuddles, there's a good chance they're grooming. Heck, they could be grooming while getting those cuddles. Healthy cats, they are just hardwired to keep up appearances and rid themselves of debris. Loose fur, parasites, everything in between. The younger the feline, the more these grooming sessions will look like a gymnastics routine. So just know that all of that grooming is normal and healthy. As long as your cat isn't aggressive and pulling out large chunks of fur, the standard washing that is to be expected. And what about playtime? Are there things that you can learn and understand by watching your cat play? Certainly. 
What you'll notice almost immediately is that cats, especially young and healthy felines, they let those instincts take over during a play session. Almost everything is worthy of being hunted. They stalk, they hunt, they capture, rinse, and repeat. If you've ever wondered why your cat loves to hide behind the sofa, then just jump out as you walk by. Well, it's all part of the game. Play stalking. The hunt. Cats need that outlet to live out their instincts, even if it's just a playful thing in a playful setting. In many ways, this goes back to what I said at the very top. That independence they need, the curiosity and the adventure. Cats need that outlet, a way to blow off some steam and simply be a feline. How a cat will act and behave in the home. A lot of it will be determined by how much they're able to release in terms of their natural engagement and those desires. You will likely find that your cat is calmer and less on edge. If they have that outlet to play, stalk, hunt, and capture. Another thing to understand about cats is that felines are very sensitive animals. What could seem like nothing at all, just another run-of-the-mill thing, could be breaking news to your cat. Life happens. There's so much that you will never be able to control, but just understand that when the guy goes up into your attic to work on the air conditioner and bangs and clangs around, your cat won't be happy. If you move that coffee table four inches to the left, your cat will notice. Cats are keen on the little things, and sometimes it's those little things that mean the most. So, to an owner, always make an effort to avoid acts that you just know that your cat will find unpleasurable. Loud noises, new faces, changes in the routine, disruptions of the unusual variety. Keep it cool if you want your cat to stay cool. No need to have your cat stressed to the max. A bit earlier I mentioned grooming, lots and lots of grooming. Another thing to understand about cats is that they'll also do lots and lots of sleeping, as much as 16 hours per day, give or take. Felines, if they're not doing something, they'll sleep. It's rare to find a cat just doing a whole bunch of nothing, yet remain wide awake. If nothing's going on, a cat will rest. Cat naps are definitely a thing, so don't be alarmed if your cat wants to head off to dreamland if there's nothing to capture their attention. The daytime hours, the hours that you're likely wide awake, your cat will likely be counting fish and birds or whatever cats count when they're asleep. And before we wrap things up, it's important to understand your cat's basic health needs. Beyond fresh water and fresh food and the proper litter box, cleaned preferably every 24 to 48 hours if possible, cats need proper vet care and assisted grooming. Take time out of your day, three or four times per week, just for 15 minutes to groom your cat. Specialty combs or fur collection gloves will be more than satisfactory. Assist your cat in removing loose fur before it can be consumed. The risk of fur balls can be quite significant, especially if you have a cat with long fur. Feline health goes well beyond nutrition. And to the audience of Senior Cat Wellness, what are your thoughts on this topic? The quote-unquote simple things that can help owners to better understand their feline companions. Anything that I left out, I probably did. Anything that you'd like to add, certainly... The little things, there are many, so as always, if you have anything to add that could help fellow cat owners, especially novice owners, by all means, there is certainly strength in numbers, so the more tips that can be given, the more that we can all help the feline community and those who become cat owners for the very first time. As always, that comment section, it's all yours. And if you enjoy this content, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as a member of the Senior Cat Wellness family. And until next time, thank you so very much for watching, and I will talk to you later.